Welcome back guys, Tactical AP here. And today I'm going to be talking about fiber optic from AT&T internet service. So in a home of about 3,000 square feet, the issues we've been having with U-verse TV and both internet have been simply the fact that, well, the picture will, and audio will be dropping out for the TV, meaning that the cable box with U-verse isn't actually reaching the wireless uh, signal that it should be receiving. So with fiber optic from AT&T, they change completely how the service is delivered to your home. So no longer is there just a coax cable running from the telephone port and power poles right into the home with a coax cable. This is delivered via fiber optic now, the optical. So totally different transfer to the home. So the age of bringing a coax cable into your home and now having that feed copper to multiple different devices and, well, from your router, those days are now over with fiber. Let's talk about the differences. So here's the rat's nest of cabling that Spectrum or even AT&T force you to have if you're not going with the fiber. Alright, so here's where some of the magic happens with a traditional cable server. So you'll have a uh, coax copper line coming into the home, most likely off of the pole, being fed probably from a junction box on the side of your home on the outside. So that's probably the one main downfall of anything coming into your home. But regardless, they do run a copper cable into it, most likely to your modem or router and then copper to all the other devices. If you notice here though, we don't use any of this stuff. In fact, this is all going to get taken out. This was here prior because we had AT&T U versus copper uh, service. And at one point, Time Warner Cable and Spectrum. So instead of the copper or the coax now coming into your house, with fiber what we have, Ethernet cables. We've got a hardwire Cat7 cable coming in. Actually two of them coming in. So I'll start off by saying that nothing changes in terms of how you'll watch TV with Uverse if you go to the fiber optic, which is extremely convenient that nothing has to be changed as far as the TV. Alright, so according to the AT&T website, a lot of this depends on your fiber availability to your home, depends on your transport type. Now you either have an FTTP or an IP DSL that'll work with coaxial wiring traditionally already inside of your house. So the thing to remember here and what's most important or what's extremely different is the optical network terminal or the ONT box. So here's where most of the magic happens. If you can see this little box, we've got a few boxes here, but along with just these keystones and the ethernet face plates, we've got two wires coming into our ONT. Our ONT is being fed copper, it's wound up inside of there, and then it converts that to, I'm sorry, fed with fiber, then converts it to a copper signal, which an Ethernet cable is then connected out of the back of that, going in to then AT&T's modem. So, in addition to the modem, they also give you a wireless access point. The modem supply that I've been using is the model 5268AC, with an ARIS wireless access point. Now I know this might look like a lot here, but essentially this is the only place in the house you'll need to have this. So if you chose to have this in the basement or an upstairs bedroom, essentially this is the only spot that you'll need all of this wiring and any of this ethernet cable. But essentially we're fed up fiber up to this point, and at this point out, we're copper being fed with RJ45 ethernet cables, CAT6, into a modem and then from out here. Now we could go with a mesh network from out. from from here using a different router giving us an extended range but even to the cable box here there are no actual wires connected directly from that ONT to this cable box this is all still picked up on the wireless signal so essentially what is the advantage of the fiber versus the copper fed service from AT&T to begin with and well I'll start by saying that one of the largest or biggest advantages of the fiber service from AT&T is well the speeds amazing blazing fast one gig speeds that simply aren't ever dropping out at this point. But not only the speeds, it's the aesthetics and the work of the installers themselves. AT&T actually took the time to really make the work look good and hide the wires, fishing them behind the wall, so on and so forth. Installing keystone wall plates, face plates, so on and so forth. But I can certainly tell you from past experience that Time Warner Cable or Spectrum, Compass, Comcast and Xfinity simply just do not take the time or make the effort to make any of their installs good that I've ever had or seen.
which is why they actually tell the AT&T installers not to mess with any of the current home's coaxial wiring. So no more using the phone line like with our DSL or 56K modems we used to have. At the very least, you're going to want to designate a spot where most likely your ONT box will be. But no more need to rely on the old school RJ11 phone jacks. And well, as I said before, AT&T never required any coaxial copper wires going into any of their DVR boxes or cable boxes in general. Which makes things like home automation incredibly easier. So I can tell you that personally with this install, AT&T chose exactly where they were going to install this ONT box on the wall, and that was essentially where the modem was placed. You see, if we would have had the modem, say, in the basement or in an upstairs master bedroom, well, most likely they'd be installing that ONT box at that point there. So one more simple advantage of the fiber versus the traditional copper-fed service is simply the amount of cable boxes you're allowed to have in your home or can have in the home with the fiber. You see, without fiber, you might be limited in a 3,000-square-foot home to maybe only three to four cable boxes or DVR receivers. Now you're actually able to have an almost an unlimited amount through probably even upwards of 5,000 square feet. But after everything is said and done, the benefits of the fiber have been much increased over the generic copper-fed service from AT&T and or Spectrum, which are mainly the two internet services that are available in our area. We have basically three choices now, AT&T Copper, Spectrum, or Time Warner Copper, and now AT&T Fiber, which has become available in more areas than not now. So I want to talk about quickly the benefits of the fiber over the copper service from AT&T alone. And I really think that you're going to notice the benefits over the fiber if simply you know what you're doing. If you know about your internet equipment and you know if you're operating on a 2G versus a 5G network, then I really think people are going to notice the difference. If you're unaware simply of what some of the devices you're using and what network you're on, I really don't think you're going to see much of an improvement. It's only the people that are really actively doing a speed test on their computer and fully aware of what those broadband speeds are. But nonetheless, surprisingly, the installation from AT&T was pretty seamless. It didn't take more than a few hours. As I said before and pointed out that everything was here in this uh, rat's nest of cabling. This is going to be basically where you have your modem and router. If you had it in a different area, most likely they would install it in a different area, and I'm sure that they would install it in well, any area that you asked it to be in. But after a few months of use with the fiber from AT&T, I wanted to do a quick comparison between the Spectrum copper-fed service versus the fiber from AT&T's service. And well, with streaming services becoming so popular, like Netflix, Amazon Prime, so on and so forth, and even people demanding 4K Ultra HD video from their broadband internet connection, mind you, wireless, the speeds now are more important than ever. And with AT&T Fiber becoming, well, more popular in certain areas, I think it's really going to be a common service that a lot of people are going to be going with over the next couple of years. Now, I want to point out one mistake I made before in pointing out the fact that all of the boxes are wireless. Not every single box or cable box from AT&T is going to be wireless. In fact, some of them you're able to have a hardwired Ethernet connection, which almost guarantees or ensures the fact that you're going to get no interruptions and, well, well, constant signal to the box. And as I have pointed out before, you can certainly go with a mesh network in your home if it's, say, larger than 5,000 square feet, as most likely then, in that case, you're going to need some type of range extension as, well, a generic router or access point probably won't be sufficient enough for the speeds that you're hoping to get. So personally, myself, I have actually seen an improvement in the video and audio quality. And if listening to music through your TV is something that you do on a regular basis with AT&T, well, I can say that the fiber installation has definitely made an improvement in the ability to listen to music uninterrupted with a, uh, well, higher fidelity that most of us are looking for. Now, as most of you are probably aware, the AT&T service versus the Spectrum or Time Warner Cable service is almost a night and day difference. As far as the music is concerned, there's a much greater selection of music on the AT&T's service than there is, well, on Spectrum or 
time warners. And if, well, you're specifically looking for the music, I would definitely say to go with the AT&T fiber service over even the CopperFed service. Now, whether or not you decide to go with their TV service in addition to the internet service is, well, up to you. But I can tell you that paying about $100 per month provides for the fiber and, well, the TV with multiple boxes, at least at this location. Now, as far as I've always been aware, AT&T has broadcasted their service, or at least for television, in 720p, whereas Spectrum or Time Warner Cable has always broadcasted it in 1080i or interlaced. But when it comes to the quality of the video, you're really not going to notice too much of a difference between the copper fed service and, well, the fiber service. But I can tell you that there is a definite increase in your broadband speed, and not only that, but extended range with the fiber significantly over the copper fed service. Well, thanks for watching, guys. That's going to wrap up today's video on the AT&T fiber installation. After this, I'll have a full comparison between AT&T's fiber service and, well, Spectrum's copper fed service, giving an overview or generalization of what my thoughts are on both of the services, and not only that, but taking a look at the price as well as some of the performance and features both services come to offer. Well, thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe, most of all. Take care, guys.